So today we are going to discuss about the proper method of offering correction and receiving correction. And while we are entering into that topic, we have to first of all realize that there is a difference between fault finding or criticizing and correcting. Like finding faults just for the sake of it uh, is not desirable. That is actually a sign of envy. And the Vaishnavas generally should try to avoid that tendency. And the consideration also is who is in a position to offer correction. Not the juniors, but the seniors. Uh, a junior doesn't have the right mm, to correct a senior. But uh, it is a senior who has the responsibility of correcting. It is a kind of the guidance to the juniors, to their spiritual path. And <clears throat> that's why, uh, one, first of all, we have to be very careful that we are not simply criticizing somebody, but uh, trying to rectify him. And uh, that will, must be done in a proper way, and it, this, ten, this attitude also be cultivated from both sides. The senior who is offering the correction, and junior who is receiving that correction. While dealing with this, uh, the proper method of offering and receiving correction, uh, we'll be dealing with three aspects. First aspect will be the right attitude, then right authority, and right action. So first we'll discuss about the right attitude. So as I mentioned earlier, that the attitude should be clear. The attitude should be correct. And that attitude is uh, helping the person to make spiritual advancement. When we offer correction, it is not a matter of just finding faults with somebody and then criticize him and uh, denigrate him. But uh, it should be done with a proper uh, feeling that here is somebody who needs correction for the sake of his spiritual advancement. And in that respect, Srila Prabhupada uh, gave uh, many instructions and a few of them has been correct, have been corrected, collected here. There is in a letter to Hamsadutta, Srila Prabhupada wrote, Devotee means he is able to tolerate all kinds of discomfort and whims of the material nature. And because he is too much absorbed in serving Krishna, he takes no time to become angry or uh, take offense. Like those who are correcting, the senior devotees who are correcting, they should not become angry when they see that some junior devotee is making some mistake. And the junior devotee uh, should not take offense that a senior devotee is correcting him. Uh, and it is not a matter of fault finding. Uh, it is a matter of uh, pointing out that some rectification, some corrections are necessary and how he should do that. A devotee is one uh, who is a very humble. Devotees are naturally humble. Therefore, they, don't, they avoid uh, fault finding. They don't like to speak ill about anybody. They are rather uh, very concerned about their other spiritual progress. And another consideration here that the devotee's attitude generally is or should be that if it is a matter of finding faults, then he finds faults with himself, not with others. He considers that these are the defects in me and how best I can rectify them. To Karandhar Prabhu, Prabhupada uh, wrote that regarding uh, one devotee, uh, anyway his name is mentioned here also, Sriman Hayagriva Das, it is our duty to rectify him. 
So uh, we have a responsibility, uh, a duty to rectify somebody who is making some mistakes, especially those who are in a senior position and especially those who are in a management situation. So when a devotee makes a mistake, the senior devotees in management must correct him. Then Prabhupada, huh, in another letter to Gorsundar, Prabhupada wrote, If there is some incident and I claim that no one is cooperating with me or no one will work with, with me, then it is my defect, not theirs. We, this is the spirit with which we should take. Like if there is some problem, if there is some difficulty, say for example, when devotees are not cooperating with me or devotees are not recognizing my activities, then we should, instead of blaming them, we should rather see that it is my fault that I am not able to uh, do things in such a way that uh, others will consider that it is the right thing to do. And we should at the same time focus more on service than aggrandizement. A Vaishnava is simply concerned about rendering service to Krishna. He is not interested in self-aggrandizement. If he gets recognition, well and good. If he doesn't get recognition, he is also unperturbed in that situation. Sukhecha bigata spriha, dukhecha anudvignamana. He is not attached to the happy situation and nor he is uh, disturbed or perturbed uh, in a difficult situation. In a letter to Brahmananda, Srila uh, <coughs> Prabhupada uh, wrote that this is called Vaikuntha attitude. Uh, in the Vaikuntha, factually, there is no fault in anyone. But there is another type of competition. So, uh, Vaikuntha is the situation, Vaikuntha is the uh, state where there is, uh, there is no suffering, there is no anxiety. Uh, and in Vaikuntha, everyone is perfect. Uh, Everyone is perfect, so uh, there is no room for fault finding or uh, even correcting. But correcting can be done if something, some, somebody does something wrong, yes, uh, that room is always there. But in the point Prabhupada is making here, that in Vaikuntha also there is competition. But that competition is the competition of rendering service. It is not a competition to get a higher position and greater recognition. Rather, oh, he is serving so nicely. So uh, let me also follow his example. And uh, in order to please my Lord, let me do something even better. Let me do something even greater. Uh, so that is the Vaikuntha competition. Like in Iskon, Prabhupada allowed devotees to get into such competition uh, when it came to book distribution. Prabhupada uh, wanted <coughs> the devotees to distribute books and get into competition. Oh, Los Angeles is doing so many books and New York became uh, concerned or became uh, excited. Oh, look, Los Angeles distributed so many books and pra they pleased Prabhupada so much. So now let us do better than Los Angeles and uh, in order to please Srila Prabhupada. It is not that not a competition between Los Angeles and New York, rather it is an intensity of desire to please Srila Prabhupada. So that that is the competition that Srila Prabhupada allowed the devotees to cultivate. In a letter to Tamal Krishna Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada also wrote, I have received one complaint from an Indian devotee at Mayapur. Uh, then Prabhupada, he, is, he complained that he has been maltreated by the American devotees. 
So uh, Prabhupada wrote to him that see that there is no such feeling that oh these American devotees are treating the Indian devotees in a bad way. Uh, rather uh, create a brotherly atmosphere, create a, a loving, friendly atmosphere where everyone is happy. This is also a Vaikuntha situation. Uh, no discrimination among devotees. Uh, rich or poor, uh, learned or uh, uneducated. Uh, no. Uh, like uh, we all are one family. And this attitude must be uh, uh, cultivated. Because we should always remember that whoever came to Krishna consciousness came with a sincere intention of making spiritual advancement. So we must create that opportunity uh, for uh, whoever comes. But at the, at the same time, we should be careful. Uh, like uh, Prabhupada, in another letter to Rupendra Prabhu, Prabhupada wrote, uh, Yes, a new may, may commit blunder in the beginning, but that does not mean that we may be too impatient with him. People may make mistakes, uh, but we should be careful. Uh, we should be, uh, we should not be impatient but tolerant with them and try to educate them, try to help them to make uh, spiritual advancement. And if everyone is trained, uh, Prabhupada is saying like, we should not think that everyone comes in a perfect situation, everyone is perfect. No, rather we should start from the consideration that uh, everyone needs correction. We are dealing with uh, individuals who are not perfect. Therefore, they need to be corrected, they need to be trained, and that must be done in a proper way. Then there is a consideration of the right authority hmm, for correction. Who is authorized to correct? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, that it is not the responsibility of the junior to correct a senior. Rather, it is the senior who corrects a junior. But of course, sometimes we may run into a situation when the senior devotee is making some mistake. A senior devotee is acting in a wrong way. And when we come into a situation like that, then the junior devotee should report to the higher authority. And if there is no such opportunity to report to a higher authority, then it has been advised that as a group, uh, the junior devotee should approach the senior devotee and try to correct him or point out the mistakes that he is making. Otherwise, uh, we must understand that it is not the duty of the, it is not proper for the junior devotees to uh, rectify the senior devotees. That, that way the Vaishnava community is a very strict, uh, strictly organized, uh, disciplined, society. In that respect, Srila Prabhupada wrote in a letter to Madhu Mangal Prabhu uh, that <coughs> regarding general state of affairs at Amsterdam temple, I can understand that there is some disturbance among you, but that is not to be taken very seriously. Real business is preaching work and if there is full attention on this matter only, all other businesses will be automatically successful. So as long as we focus on preaching, even though there may be certain differences and some difficulties here and there, they will be adjusted. But if we deviate from our main business, which is preaching, then we will run into major difficulties. And what is the basic requirements? Prabhupada is pointing out, uh, following the four regulative principles, chanting 16 round every day and attend the programs, attend the morning programs at least. So this is how uh, we have to be <coughs> concerned about that the spiritual standard is maintained. The leaders must be concerned about that. The spiritual standard is maintained and uh, the uh, preaching is uh, the essential part of it. Preaching is the essence. And as long as we do that, 
there may be some differences and difficulties here and there. Even there may be some conflict with each other, but they will be adjusted because all of them are situated on the right platform. Uh, in another letter, Srila Prabhupada mentioned, uh, this letter was written in 1972. Prabhupada is saying, our business is to raise ourselves to the highest status of life as preachers of Krishna's message. And one should behave himself rigidly, then he should instruct others. Be himself exemplary, Prabhupada is pointing out, the two things that there must be concerned about, we should be concerned about that, that one should be exemplary in his behavior and then teach others to become exemplary. If one has not, if one has not come to that high standard, he cannot judge or criticize others. So our main point is, that our behavior should be exemplary in order to correct others. If we don't do that, uh, if we don't set that right example, then uh, we lose our credibility. Then the spiritual authority uh, must be based on love and trust. And <clears throat> in that respect, Srila Prabhupada is saying in a conversation, in a discussion with Shamsundar Prabhu, uh, Prabhupada said, without love, nothing can be, nothing can sustain. If I do not love Krishna, I cannot surrender. So the essence of our relationship with Krishna and with devotees and with others should be based on love. Uh, it is the love that makes all the difference. And the correction and uh, rectification should be done on the basis of love only. The more you love, the more the surrender is also perfect. The more you love others, the more they will respond. Uh, like Prabhupada gives the example, uh, the child is being chastised uh, by the mother, but the child is calling out, Mummy, Mummy. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like he's being, the child is being chastised, but he is uh, depending upon the mother. Uh, similarly, <coughs> the devotees, when senior devotees correct a junior devotee, uh, that if, if the loving relationship is there, then the when he is being chastised, the junior devotee will depend upon the senior devotee. Yes, Prabhu, please tell me how, what, what I need to do. Please uh, help me to overcome my defects. And Prabhupada gives the example that, look, I mean, what happened? I mean, uh, our relationship is so practical. Uh, Prabhupada is giving the example. You all are Americans and I am an Indian. Uh, you all are young, I am old. Uh, we don't have any similarity. But uh, why, how did we develop that relationship? Because uh, Prabhupada pointed out, because he loved them. And uh, in, re in return they loved him. And this love that Srila Prabhupada expressed, we must also remember, it's not just some words saying, I love you, you love me, and so forth. Prabhupada showed them, like when he didn't have any money, practically, uh, whatever little money he collected, he used to go buy bhoga from Chinatown, some vegetables, some grains, and so forth. And he used to cook and invite these young American boys and girls to come and take prasad. Prabhupada himself made sweets. Uh, when, the, when he saw that these boys love sweets, Prabhupada used to keep this gulab jamun and other sweets in a, in a jar so that these boys can come and eat whenever they want to. So this is how Prabhupada actually expressed his love through his action. And the response was that they offered themselves completely to him. <clears throat> and managerial authority considering the domain of one's influence. One should be careful not to step out of his domain. Uh, and in Nara Narayan Prabhu, uh, Prabhupada wrote, I beg to thank you very much for your letter. 
pointing out some of the discrepancies of many of the devotees in New York. You are correct regarding the items which you have stated, such as sleeping in front of the deities, making of un uh, taking of unoffered foods, drinking water from the bathroom, and non-chanting of rounds. But the thing is, discipline cannot be observed unless there is obedience. As you are obedient to me, you should be similarly obedient to my representative. So Prabhupada is pointing out that uh, here comes that point, like the person in a question here was a GBC and he was behaving in an inappropriate way and a junior devotee, Madhu Naranarayan, wrote to Srila Prabhupada and Prabhupada is saying that be careful about, although you are detecting these defects in him, uh, be careful well, how to deal with him because he is your senior. Uh, so Prabhupada pointed out that because he is a senior devotee, he is in a responsible position, uh, instead of uh, finding faults and reporting to me, you just speak to him uh, and as I said like uh, in a group of devotees can go together and speak to him and Prabhupada said that he is a reasonable person and he will un understand and he will act accordingly. And in another letter Prabhupada wrote, in regards to your question about how the relationship between a sannyasi and the temple president should be, my hope is that you will all be able to cooperate together. Uh, the temple president is in charge and the sannyasi should not contradict his instructions. So Prabhupada pointed out that although sannyasi is in a senior position, when they go to a temple they should accept the authority of the temple president because the temple president is in charge and they should not conflict or they should not contradict. The temple president should have proper respect for the sannyasi and the sannyasi also should have uh, proper respect for the temple president. And this is how uh, the proper mood of cooperation will be established. And even if a sannyasi sees that something is wrong, uh, it, he should actually report it to the temple president instead of he himself interfering in that. And then in uh, then work it out in a Krishna conscious way. Uh, not that he will try to override the temple president's authority. I want that you all work together cooperatively. And the cooperation will develop uh, when we develop this proper attitude. And uh, now the other consideration is the right action for offering correction. Like we must correct in a proper way. Uh, and that is to be tactful and friendly uh, in dealings in such situ situations and mend it without breaking it. If somebody ma makes a mistake, uh, correct him in such a way, do it tactfully. Uh, don't be blunt so that he loses hope and runs away, uh, goes away. Uh, Prabhupada pointed out, uh, it is better to correct him to the standard point by friendly gestures. Uh, deal with them in a friendly way, in a compassionate way. Uh, like show your concern about your, his spiritual welfare. And ultimately the bottom line actually again, time and time again comes back to the point uh, that it should be done with love and care. And Prabhupada pointed out it's very easy to reject somebody. Uh, it's very, but to reform him, that requires great skill. So we don't want to reject, but we want to reform. And it must be done in an intelligent way, in a tactful way, so that the person doesn't get disheartened and uh, leave the movement. Prabhupada was giving the example of a devotee who is a junior devotee, but uh, he was very, uh, made some mistakes, but Prabhupada appreciated him earlier. And Prabhupada said, deal with him carefully, uh, make him, uh, don't discourage him. Uh, he's a good boy, his intentions are sincere, he made some mistakes, uh, don't drive him away. And that will be the discredit to all of you leaders. So, uh, 
correct the devotees, don't drive him away uh, when there is some fault in him. In a letter to Bali Mardan Prabhu uh, from 1974, Srila Prabhupada is writing that Sudama Maharaj uh, should be encouraged. He is doing nicely, practically. The old, the old branch was abolished. Since he has gone there, things have improved very much. So he should be encouraged very much in his activities. Like again Prabhupada is pointing out that among the devotees, there must be loving relationship. Like uh, he did, he made some mistakes. Uh, he did, he acted in a wrong way, this Sudama Swami. But Prabhupada is saying he has done so well. Uh, since he took up the uh, responsibility of the temple, the temple is improving. Uh, so this, don't discourage him uh, and amicably deal with him to correct him. And in a letter to uh, Hansa Dutta, Srila Prabhupada, that regarding Bali Mardan, we have decided to review the complaints and do the needful at the next GBC meeting. Bali Mardan came to me when I was in Vrindavan. He showed a tendency for retirement because he knows there are so many complaints against him. So he was in New York and he did things which was not very nice and so he became so discouraged knowing that so many complaints came against him that he actually uh, decided to retire but Prabhupada is pointing out that uh, don't discourage him rather try to engage him so this is the compassion of Srila Prabhupada uh, and Prabhupada is saying that uh, I wish that all the existing GBC members may be trained up so perfectly that in the future, in my absence, they can manage the whole society very nicely and strongly. That is my desire. Try to settle the differences among yourselves amicably and correct yourself. One man is trained up with great difficulty, especially in spiritual life. Everyone has got some weakness and deficiency. It is better to correct or mend than to break it. And in a lecture in Vrindavan in 76, Srila Prabhupada is saying that if you pat your subordinates, it will increase their faulty habits. And if you chastise them, they'll improve. So sometimes chastisement is necessary. Like when somebody does something wrong and instead of chastising or correcting, if we encourage him or if we tolerate him, if we don't point out the defects in him, uh, then it will create uh, disservice. Uh, therefore, it is advised that either your son or disciple, you should always chastise them. Never give them leniency. So a little leniency, immediately so many faults will grow. Now for a practical life, we are known all over the world as shaven-headed. Uh, so Prabhupada is dealing with one situation. A devotee had long hair, grown a long hair. He was a sannyasi. So Prabhupada is pointing out that uh, this is not right. Like Prabhupada said that this is the seed of your hippie mentality coming out. Devotees must be shaved head. Our society should be known or recognized as the society of the shaven headed and not the society of long hair. Uh, so that is the culture that Srila Prabhupada was trying to establish. Prabhupada is pointing out the, that we should forgive the wrongdoer and allow them to start afresh. But we must remember that these are uh, we have to deal with different situations according to the situation. Not that we have a simple formula for uh, across the board, no. A devotee in the right situation must see how to make that correction. Prabhupada is here correcting one devotee uh, who was in Paris. And uh, although he was a householder, 
he had an affair with another unmarried devotee girl and she became pregnant. So Prabhupada did not reject him. Uh, Prabhupada just corrected him saying that uh, they sh should be separated. This girl uh, who he had uh, relationship with, uh, she should stay in America and he should go back to Paris to his wife. Uh, and Prabhupada had to deal with uh, difficult situations like that. Like, uh, because we can understand, like, they were all young Americans. Their culture was so different, so different from Krishna conscious culture. And this kind of uh, improper relationships were developing. And Srila Prabhupada was tolerating that, and, but at the same time, strictly, he is trying to uh, correct it, correct them. And <clears throat> now the next point is that how to receive correction in proper spirit. Uh, like when somebody, when a senior devotee is correct pointing our defects or faults, we should be careful uh, or rather we should take it with the spirit, the right attitude that he is helping me. I have this problem, I have this defect and he is helping me to correct me so that I can make spiritual advancement. We must remember that our goal is not in this world. Our goal is to go back to the spiritual world. So whatever is beneficial for our spiritual progress, we should accept it in the right spirit. Uh, and he is giving the example of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, he is admitting that my spiritual master saw me as a, as a fool. Uh, Guru Morep Murkho Dekhi Korila Shashan. He saw me, he considered me to be a fool. And uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he is saying uh, that he is a fool. But in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching us how to develop the right attitude in front of the spiritual master. Uh, and we should be always ready to uh, take his correction, take his guidance. Uh, not ever, never ever think that I know more than the spiritual master. I know better than the spiritual master. So these are <coughs> some uh, very important instruction, like uh, a junior devotee should be respectful, should be humble. Uh, not only junior devotee, all devotees should be very humble. That is our most important uh, consideration. Trinado pisuni chena, taro riva shahishnuna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave maximum emphasis on these two points. We have to be more humble than a blade of grass and we should be as tolerant as a tree. So if we develop, if we cultivate that attitude, uh, then uh, we will be properly situated in our spiritual life. And <coughs> Srila Prabhupada uh, also gave an example of uh, a story from uh, Srimad Bhagavatam towards the end. 83, 83rd chapter, in a, sorry, 89th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, that Bhrigu Muni was asked by the demigods, who is actually the greatest out of the three uh, most exalted personalities, Brahma, Vishnu or Lord Shiva. So you know, Bhrigu Muni went out to find out who is the greatest. So uh, he went to Lord Brahma. Brahma is his father. But uh, he went there. He didn't offer obeisances to him, didn't show any respect. Brahma became very, very upset with him. Uh, but at the same time, Brahma controlled his anger. He expressed his anger, but he controlled it. So uh, Bhrigu Muni left. 
he went to Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is actually his brother. Lord Shiva also came from Lord Brahma. So when Brahma, when Lord Shiva saw Bhrigu Muni, seeing his dear brother, he went to embrace him. But Bhrigu Muni refused to take his embrace. He's saying that you are a deviant heretic. I don't want to touch you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. So Lord Shiva became so angry that he picked up his trident and he was about to kill Bhrigu Muni. Then of course at that time Parvati Beg for, uh, fell at his feet and uh, requested him to uh, subside his anger. Then uh, Bhrigu Muni said, okay, you are also not the best. Then he went to Lord Vishnu. At that time, Vishnu was lying uh, with his head on the lap of Lakshmi Devi. And Bhrigu Muni just went and kicked him on the chest. And Vishnu just got up. Said, oh, I hope it didn't hurt your foot. <laughs> My chest is so hard and your feet is so soft. <laughs> and uh, then he said, I'm sorry that, you know, you came. I didn't hear ex exalted Brahmana like yourself came. And I could not properly treat you. I was just lying down, with, totally disregarding you. Uh, so this is how Bhrigu Muni considered that Lord Vishnu is the greatest. Why? He is situated in the mode of goodness. Brahma in the mode of passion and Lord Shiva is in the mode of ignorance. So this is how through our dealings with others it will become clear in which mode we are situated. And we must remember we must transcend the mode of ignorance and mode of passion and at least come to the mode of goodness. Because in the mode of goodness only we can practice devotional service and our goal actually is to transcend even the mode of goodness and come to the pure goodness which is the transcendental nature.